Hello there, welcome to this new video regarding self-loading cargo version 1.6.2.2 which is the next release. In this video I want to talk about a new feature that I'm bringing online um, which is the introduction of an in-flight entertainment system to your aircraft and more specifically it is the simulation of independent in-flight entertainment system screens throughout the aircraft. and. Uh, the way to, well, let's just dive in basically. So I click on self loading cargo and bring up the uh, the aircraft layout. So as you can see, we're fully loaded, we're ready to go. We're currently sat in Newcastle and we're about to head up to Inverness of all places. Um, so when you're setting up the the flight with self loading cargo, you get to choose what sort of in flight entertainment there are on uh, there is on board the aircraft. So you get to choose the type of Wi Fi. Um, because there's a simulation of the different types of Wi-Fi like air to ground systems or satellite based systems and I've added a checkbox there basically which says include IFE on the aircraft so it is entirely optional if you don't want the inflate entertainment screens on your aircraft then just leave the checkbox blank if you do then you will have the, uh, the facility included within the application so if I click on well I'll click on 01A who is Deborah Olson sitting at the front left there of the aircraft and you'll notice that because I've got IFE turned on on this aircraft or the in-flight entertainment system I have a, a button here that says turn on IFE screen if I click on that it's going to load the introduction to the in-flight entertainment system which obviously welcomes her on board and shows the seat number the class of the seat the flight number, the departure and arrival airports and obviously the current time which you'll see uh, matches the local time here in, uh, in Newcastle. Now just to illustrate the independent simulations throughout the aircraft, um, if I click on this person at the front right of the aircraft in 01F, they don't have their screen turned on so if I turn that on their in reduction screen is going to show their seat number which is 01F and similarly at the rear right of the aircraft same thing this person's in 38F and you can flick between them independently now I want to before I dig into how this all works I want to also show that it, because there's going to be sort of a deep dive into the coding of the passenger simulation in version 1.7 uh, happening after Christmas um, there will be failures etc coming on board technical issues obviously passenger issues etc and one of the failures is going to be that either one or all of the IFE screens on the aircraft can fail so I've, I've set up the ability for this demo to be able to fail any of the independent uh, any of the in-flight entertainment screens and we'll do that now I've got a button here which says fail this in-flight entertainment system so this is 01F the, to the, uh, the right hand side at the front if I click on fail it's going to uh, it's going to show a fa failure screen as if the as if it had blue screened out, and uh, obviously that's not great. But if I click back on uh, 018, hers hasn't failed, and neither has uh, Jeffrey Lawrence's in 38F. So they are independently simulated. If I click back on this uh, this one at the front right of the uh, of the aircraft, this one has failed, and obviously that will make that passenger very unhappy. So I can unfail it. And it's back it can be used right so let's uh, let's get into the in-flight entertainment system and how it works now obviously these are templates where the information is uh, is updated automatically from the aircraft and any dynamic information such as the altitude etc gets updated continually which I'll show you in a second so what we're going to do is we've got 018 a highlighted here we're gonna um, stop listening to our music and we're gonna decide to have a poke around in the in-flight entertainment system while we're waiting for departure. So I'll click on touch to start and that will take us to the my flight page. Now you, as you'll notice we've got a navigation bar down the left hand side and uh, obviously I can click on home which will take me back to the intro screen. Touch to start will bring me back to my flight screen. I've got another button here for the in-flight services which we'll get to in a moment. Online shopping which we'll get to in a moment and a standby button. If I click on standby it's as if I type. It's as if I press the button on the uh, the right hand side, so I can turn it back on, and I'm back to my intro page. Touch to start, and it takes me to my flight overview page, which obviously shows me my 01A business class, the current time, 
the uh, departure and arrival airport information, my current altitude, my current airspeed, which obviously is a little, uh, there's a small amount of wind here, my ground speed, which is zero because I'm uh, currently parked, and my current heading, which is 184 degrees. Uh, we have a, a bar here which says in flight services will be available once we are airborne and that will change as the flight progresses remember this is sort of an overview of the flight in the future we might put a little map or something on there so you can see the uh, the direction and uh, current position of the aircraft but this will show the next service so if there's an in-flight movie going to start soon it will say the next in-flight service will be an in-flight movie or drinks or uh, hot food or something like that whichever one is coming up next and we'll get to that in a moment and at the bottom it shows the current state of the flight now this is on every single page in the in-flight entertainment system currently it shows pre-flight we'll be departing soon because obviously we're waiting to depart we haven't uh, moved off the stand yet and we're just waiting to go but again if i click on the other person they're still at the end of our screen the person at the back i'll fail there so you can see so they're suffering a failure at the back but ours is fine and we're currently on the uh, on the my flight page again to the to the right hand person there on the intro page and this person is on the uh, on the overview page so hopefully you can see that everything is completely independently simulated and uh, yeah everything's independently simulated so let's dig into the the next pages so this is our my flight overview page as we've just been through this information here is dynamically generated as I said so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this out of the way slightly and uh, I'm going to try to find the button where I can set the Q and H and if you watch the altitude that will automatically update when I change that so you can see the altitude is uh, is being updated automatically within the uh, within the in-flight entertainment system and obviously when we push back the ground speed the ground speed will increase and the heading will obviously change as the aircraft turns so that is the my flight page so the next page is the in-flight services page and it shows services we have on board for you today now we've got one drink we've got one food service zero alcohol zero duty free and one in-flight movie and if we bring up the uh, traditional view you can see that that corresponds to the the services that were loaded on the aircraft again one drink one food zero alcohol and duty free and one movie now what this screen doesn't show is the sort of the itinerary of the uh, of, of what is going to be served next but the in-flight entertainment system does so if we scroll down a little bit you can see the first service is going to be in-flight movie it'll show once we're airborne obviously because uh, the services don't happen on the ground and then we've got a drink service and then we've got the food service now as the uh, as the aircraft sort of climbs and services start when they're announced it will show this is starting soon or this is starting in 55 minutes or or, or this has been cancelled so the the passenger always has an idea of what's going on with the uh, with the in-flight services and you can see what's going on as well if you uh, if you obviously choose to view the in-flight entertainment system next page is really a placeholder but this is online shopping for each individual passenger so if they wanted to make any orders um, from the aircraft during the flight um, maybe they could pay online with their credit card more to come on this one but I just wanted to put the placeholder in there so you can see basically how it's going to uh, how it's going to work and again we've got the, uh, the flight status at the bottom now this is also um, it's linked to the Wi-Fi so if I actually turn the Wi-Fi off it's currently managed by the camera crew but I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi off you should see hopefully that the uh, if I click on something you can see it's failing it's as if I've triggered a failure but the in-flight entertainment system itself hasn't failed um, it's just that the Wi-Fi is turned off so if I turn the Wi-Fi back on And then say I'm the passenger and I was like, right, well, what's going on here? I've just seen this error screen. I'll turn it off and turn it back on again. There we are, it's back. So as the flight progresses, if the Wi-Fi ever drops out, then the passengers will be affected by it, like the in-flight entertainment system won't be available. Now we'll add an option to turn that off if it's not something that you would like to have happen. But 
it is possible and again they're all individually simulated so they can uh, they can be filled at will like I said that, that one at the, the back right is still in a filled state if I unfill it they're back and we're still on that page on the uh, on the front left person so yeah you can have up to God, I forget what the limit is in uh, in South Southern Cargo now, but I think it's about 600 passengers on uh, each on each aircraft. So that's 600 individually simulated in flight entertainment screens, which is uh, which is pretty nice. I doubt you'll have uh, different pages for each passenger, but the capability is there, and obviously all the failures and stuff that can go along with it, and the impact on the passengers that that will have as uh, development progresses. So. What I want to do now is I want to take you through a departure so we can monitor this uh, dynamic data and see what's happening. So we'll pretend we're a passenger and uh, we're looking at this screen as the aircraft departs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up GSX. Now normally I would have to select the beacon light but in 1.6.2.2 you don't have to. You can call GSX directly and SLC will will detect the, uh, the, the pushback. So I'm going to just get rid of this menu here. And I'm going to say prepare for pushback and departure from GSX. And uh, if I move this window out of the way, you can see the pushback trucks arrived. And uh, obviously we've got a, a marshaller down there or a ground staff down there. They're going to connect up and then they're going to uh, they're going to communicate with us. They're going to give us a warning that the beacon light isn't turned on because I uh, I haven't turned it on. Obviously I've gone through GSX. If I wanted to turn the beacon light off to trigger the communications, I could still do that. Let's wait for GSX to connect. Should just be a few minutes. Round to cockpit. Go. go ahead. Ground tow is connected. Just a heads up, your beacon light is not active. Roger. Yep, the beacon light is not on, so. Put that on now. You can see Ground to cockpit. Go ahead. Tow is connected. Release parking brakes when ready to push back. Roger. So, it's told me to release parking brakes, but as per the message, I've got to uh, select the pushback direction from the GSX menu when it appears. But you will notice that on the uh, IFE, it's saying we are preparing to push back to the taxiway because the IFE has detected that we're in pushback mode. Aircraft's going up. And I'm going to detail to the right. Release parking brakes. Tone is attached. Steering pin is inserted. Stand by while we start pushback. We have now started our departure and off. OK, Captain. We're clear of the stand and you're free to start engines. Starting engine one. Roger. And you can see the ground speed is updating as well. The heading is updating because we're turning. And it uh, does say we have now started our departure and are pushing back. Cabin crew, please arm doors and cross check. And the uh, the crew are going to start securing the cabin in the moment, which will also be displayed on the uh, the bottom of the inflate entertainment system. Starting engine two. Roger. There you go. The cabin crew are securing the cabin, ready for takeoff. Please pay attention to the cabin announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we now ask for your attention. Please set your parking brake. A safety card parking is in the set. pocket showing the exit routes. Roger. Stand by. Please keep your parking brake on while we monitor engine startup and disconnect the tow. There are two emergency exits at the rear. For in the middle and you can see it says please pay attention to the cabin announcement will guide because it knows that the, uh, be aware that the safety announcement is playing. And you can see on the layout, the cabin crew are performing their uh, securing the cabin. Adjusted and released as shown. It must be fastened when the seatbelt signs are on, and we recommend that you keep it fastened at all times. 
the air supply fails, masks will drop from above you. Pull a mask towards you to start the oxygen. Put the mask over your nose and mouth, hold in place with the strap and pull on each side to adjust. Put on your own mask before helping others. If we land on water, we're just waiting on GSX. Okay, Captain. Looks like a good startup on all engines and tow is disconnected. Nose wheel is free, so you're good to go. We'll get ourselves disconnected now, so have a safe flight. Look out for the pin on the right, and we'll see you next time. That's the little pin on the right, and we'll see you next time. There is a light and whistle for attracting attention. We also carry flotation aids for children. Your tray table must now be stowed. Unrest down. Window blinds open and seat belt Alright, so that's uh, ground crew disconnected. There she is. Or he. Pin on the right, as they said. Safety announcement's finishing, so this is going to change to say that we are taxiing into the runway. Or it will when they finish securing the cabin. There we go, so we've got flaps. Flaps one and put the order brake on. And at this point we'd uh, obviously turn off the APU, etc, etc. Turn the taxi lights on and uh, and get going. So I'll move this out of the way a little bit so I can see where we're going. Parking brake off. Let's just uh, taxi to the uh, to the runway. I don't even know which is the active runway to be honest. But the cabin crew will come and uh, tell us that they're ready, and then we can tell them to get seated. But again, keep an eye on the in-flight entertainment si uh, system because the ground speed is now uh, updating. Obviously, the heading's updating. And once they finish securing the cabin, it will display a different message at the bottom. Hopefully, they'll be ready soon because. Uh, quite a short taxi to the active runway and obviously I'm taking off in the wrong direction that is a strong wind <laughs> that'll be fine passengers to go and then we will get the call from the intercom and uh, we'll be able to get going hello hi captain just to let you know that the cabin is secure for takeoff we're almost ready so you can take your seats now no problem So she's going to turn all the Wi-Fi and everything off, so we can uh, switch to. So it says we're heading to the runway for takeoff. Because this is a nighttime flight, for safety purposes, I have dimmed the cabin lights for takeoff. This is a completely normal procedure, and they will be turned back on once we've completed our departure. Thank you. She's dimmed the cabin lights, as you can see. And the in-flight entertainment system is showing that we are taking off. Here we go. And again, in-flight services will be available once we are airborne. So, we're going to get airborne. I'm going to turn uh, the cockpit lights off so I can actually uh, see properly. But if you, again, if you notice, the, uh, the in-flight services will be available once we are airborne. And also on this screen, it says once we're airborne. So once we get airborne, these notices will, uh, will change. So, let's punch it and get going and probably get showered up. Yep. Just gonna move this across a little bit. One hundred knots. 
so it won't happen immediately. There we go. Positive rate, gear up. still in the after takeoff. There we go. The next in-flight service will be hot drinks. We're climbing to our cruise altitude of 22,000 feet. So if I go onto this page now, you'll see that our itinerary has updated. So we've got an in-flight movie in 9 minutes, drink service in 14 minutes, and a food service in 29 minutes. So the passenger always knows what's, uh, what's going to go on. SLC public address. Can crew resume duties, please? So now the, the, the crew are going to make an announcement and that should show up on this uh, on this display here. You can see she's putting the emergency lights on, or well, the floor and lights on. make the announcement once the, uh, the toilets have been uh, enabled for the passengers which is what this cabin crew member is doing here she comes making a taking a sweet time to get to the intercom to let these passengers know what's going on now she may pre-announce some of these services as part of her announcement I'm not sure Please pay attention to the coming announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your seatbelts fastened while the seatbelt sign is on. That's playing a standard announcement rather than a dynamically generated one. Remember that smoking is not permitted at any time. This includes the cigarettes. In just a few moments, we'll commence our in-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase from our selection of fresh food available today. All details can be found So that's it, basically. So again, if I turn the uh, if I turn the Wi-Fi off, I can't at the moment because the announcement's been uh, announcement's been made. But when the announcement finishes, I can take control of the Wi-Fi. There you go. Right. So the Wi-Fi's turned off. So the in-flight entertainment should fail if I try to uh, press anything, which it has done. If I turn it back on again, we've got a decent signal. Turn it off, turn it back on again, and we're back. We're all good. This person's still good as well. So yeah, more to come on this, but I hope you like what you see. This will be in the next version of uh, self loaded Cargo. And uh, here you can see the, uh, the altitude and airspeed, etc., is uh, all updating nicely. And uh, yeah, I'll get this to you as soon as I can. If I don't see you uh, before Christmas, I hope you have a fantastic holiday and uh, enjoy your new year. But yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks.